Welcome to yet another session of storytelling. In the previous session, Glimpses of the Past by S. D. Savant, we have seen first the company's conquest 1757 to 1849 in which we saw how British succeeded by divide and rule policy due to the short-sighted princes of India. But Tipu Sultan, being a far-sighted, fought against the Britishers. Then we saw British rule 1765 to 1836, which gives us a sight into the prevailing superstitions spread and promoted by the religious leaders. We saw the miseries of the farmers and the ruin of small business and artisans. And we have also seen how the Britishers planned to make more profits. Then we learned about Ram Mohan Roy, 1722 to 1833, who wanted to reform the superstitious society. He started newspaper which was stopped by the Britishers. Ram Mohan Roy is known for his efforts to abolish the practice of sati and child marriage. Now let's see the glimpses from 1765 to 1835 oppression. But the British continued to oppress Indians. In 1888, they had passed Regulation Third. Under it, an Indian could be jailed without trial in a court. All the time, British officers in India drew big salaries and also made fortunes in private business. In 1829, Britain was exporting British goods worth 7 crore rupees to India. The British prospered on the company's loot while Indian industries began to die. General Bentek reported back home, the bones of cotton weavers are bleaching the plains of India. The Britishers continued to find new ways to bring misery and suffering to Indians. For instance, they passed their unfair regulations that kept them at an advantage, like the Regulation Third in 1818, under which an Indian could be jailed without a proper trial in court. As they continued to suppress Indians, they created all sorts of favorable circumstances to uplift their own officers. The British officers drew huge amount of salaries and could deepen their pockets by making a fortune out of their private businesses. The Britishers were exporting goods in huge quantities from Britain. In 1829, they were importing goods worth 7 crore rupees to India. As a result, the Britishers grew richer and richer, leaving the Indian industries high and dry. Governor General Bentek had conveyed to Britain that the bones of cotton weavers are bleaching the plains of India to highlight the plights and misery of traditional cotton weavers in India. This means that cotton weavers were forced to starve because of the cotton mills set up by the Britishers. They produced much cheaper cloth with the help of machines that led the traditional Indian handicrafts to extinction. Next is dissatisfaction, 1835 to 1856. Education in India was in Persian and Sanskrit. In 1835, an Englishman named Macaulay suggested a change. Macaulay suggesting to the British officer, we should teach the native through English language. I agree, 
said the British officer. English education produced clerks to whom the British gave petty jobs under them. Incidentally, it also produced a new generation of intellectuals. One of the intellectuals, we must educate our brothers, second educated man, and try to improve their material conditions. Third educated man, for that we must convey our grievances to the British Parliament. By 1856, the British had conquered the whole of India. Here in the map you can see pink areas are the areas which are taken over by the British. Now only the yellow territories are still occupied by Indian rulers. They cared little about the needs of the Indians. While a con conversation, one of the Indians said, our kings have become puppets and we have lost our old jobs. Second Indian and lands. That is, they have lost jobs as well as lands. Third Indian, they are converting our brothers. And the fourth one, you only talk, do something to drive them out. Back then, all the teachings were in the form of Persian and Sanskrit. So, in 1835, a British officer named Macaulay suggested that they must translate all of it in English so that the education is delivered in their language, that is English. They did so to produce clerks to get their unimportant clerical tasks and administrative duties like answering the phone, typing documents, filing and liaising with clients done. In the process of doing so, they manufactured a whole new generation of masterminds who wanted to uplift their brothers too by educating them. They wanted to strengthen their financial prospects that could lead to a promising future. But they needed to convey this to the British Parliament. Britishers, on the other hand, couldn't care less about the needs of the Indian people. By this time, Indian people had become more worried. Their kings were now being treated as puppets. They had lost their old jobs and land. Britishers were forcing some of them to change their religion. Indians were tired of talking and wanted to do something. By 1856, the Britishers had acquired almost all parts of India. Next, the Sparks, 1855 to 1857. Taxes continued to ruin the peasants. In Bengal, the Santhals, who had lost their lands under new land rules, became desperate. In 1855, they rose in rebellion and massacred Europeans and their supporters. Discontent was brewing in East India Company's army too. Here is a gang of soldiers they are talking among, among themselves. One of the soldiers, the white soldiers get huge pay, mansions to live in, servants, second soldier, while we get a pittance and slow promotions. Third Indian soldier, the Angres ask us to cross the sea, which is against our religion. Who is a topi wala to abolish our age-old customs? Mangal Pandey, we must drive out the Angres. Sipoi Mangal Pandey attacked the adjutant of his regiment and was executed. Thousands of other Sipois revolted. 
they were stripped of their uniforms, humiliated and put in irons. Few Englishmen had cared to understand Indian customs or people's mind. Oh, proud Brahmin soldiers, do you know that the grease on the bullet you have to bite is made from the fat of the cows and pigs? Brahmin soldier, what? Another man, the white man has deceived us too. Soon, Chapatis were sent from village to village to tell the people that their emperor would want their services. Here, Chapati is being sent along a message from the emperor that the help of the villagers will be required by the emperor to defeat the Britishers and the village chief. Yes, all my village men will be ready. Similarly, Lotus flowers circulated among Indian soldiers. Same way, lotus flowers were circulated to the soldiers along with the message of the emperors seeking their help to fight against the Britishers. The masses gave up all help and shelter to the patriots. Here you can see the image of the fight broke between the Britishers and the Santals. Santals are basically the tribals of Bengal. The ever increasing taxes levied on the peasants continued to pressurize them and worsen their financial situation. The Santals in Bengal became disheartened and hopeless after they lost their land to the Britishers under the new land rules. In 1855, they launched a rebellion and massacred Europeans and all those who supported them. The people working under the East India Company were highly dissatisfied. The fact that they gave Englishmen good pay, mansions and other help while they gave Indians only inadequate pay and slow promotions further agitated Indians. They felt bad that Britishers urged them to move out of the land to cross the sea and work for them, which was even against their religion. They were motivated to drive the Britishers out. An Indian soldier serving under British or European orders named Mangal Pandey even attacked the adjutant of his regiment but was later executed. Around thousands of other sepoys like Mangal Pandey took violent action against the British but were also robbed of their uniform in turn to make the sepoys humiliated. Some of the Englishmen even began to understand how Indians thought how their minds work and their customs. They told Brahmin soldiers that the bullet that they were supposed to bite is covered with grease made of cow and pig fat. Next, chapatis were being sent to each home in every village conveying that their services could be required to fight the Englishmen. People agreed. Lotus flowers were circulated among the Indian soldiers. The nation stood against them with the support of the masses in the form of shelter and other help to the patriots. With all these, Indians were clustering to fight against the Britishers. Next, Revolt 1857. Then there was a violent outbreak at Meerut. You can see the fight between the British soldiers and Indian soldiers in Meerut. The sepoys marched to Delhi. Delhi Darbar is this. Long live our Emperor Bahadur Shah. The rebellion spread wider. 
<clears throat> Many landlords had lost their lands because of the British policies and they were sore. The white man's rule must end, said one of the Indian sepoy. Yes, we will help you, said the village head. The urge to free the nation to, of the Britishers continued to grow. The city of Meerut also experienced a violent outbreak. The sepoys marched and moved to Delhi to support their emperors like Bahadur Shah. The revolt continued to spread and grow. They even got the support of the landlords that had also lost their land due to the new land rules. People were angry and wanted to fight the Britishers. The Fight for Freedom, 1857. Many former rulers like Begum Hazrat Mahal of Lucknow were bitter. The white man has taken away my kingdom, said Begum Hazrat Mahal. Besides, popular leaders like Malvi Ahmadullah of Faizabad told the people, Rise, brothers, rise! The Angres is ruining our land. They joined the upsurge against the foreigner. The people rose everywhere in Bareilly, Kanpur and Allahabad. Azimullah Khan told Tatia Tope, We should have Peshwa Nana Sahib as our leader in this war in independence. The patriots pounced upon the British and fought pitched battles all over North India. 80-year-old Kuwar Singh of Bihar received a bullet in his wrist. Mother Ganga, this is my last offering to you, said Kuwar Singh of Bihar and he died. He was martyred. Many former rulers were bitter too because the Englishmen had taken control of the kingdoms. Leaders like Malvi Ahmadullah of Faizabad motivated people to free the country of all the Englishmen. People of Bareilly, Kanpur and Allahabad rose forward too. Former rulers like Begum Hazrat Mahal of Lucknow joined them because her kingdom had been taken by the British thereby strengthening their power against the British. Entire North India came together in large numbers to fight a pitched battle against the Britishers. In the light of this, Azimullah Khan expressed his thoughts to Tantya Tope that they should have Peshwa Nana Sahib as a leader in this war of independence against the British. In this revolt, Against the British, 80-year-old Kuwar Singh of Bihar was hit by a bullet in the wrist, which he dedicated to Mother Ganga as an offering. From a Freedom Movement, S.D. Savant. So, my dear children, what lesson do you learn from this chapter? Yes, we learn that Whenever there is injustice, whenever there are rulers who tend to oppress the interests of common people, there will be a set of rebellions, a set of determined people to fight against such dominating leaders. By the end of the British rule in 1947, India was completely crippled socially, financially, and emotionally. Our golden bird was completely drained of its wealth, but the underlying spirit of Indians rebuilt the nation to a superpower country. It's worth mentioning. We should be proud of our country and not to forget the freedom that we enjoy today has come to us because of the sacrifices of the martyrs. 
When you grow up, my dear children, remember it and work for the prosperity of a mother nation. Jai Hind.